Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we got a service call for a KitchenAid refrigerator. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. So today we have a service call for a KitchenAid refrigerator. This is actually a service call for a good friend of mine. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. We are now above the unit and our condensing unit is on top where typically residential refrigerators the condensing unit is below so i am actually the second technician here this is my friend's refrigerator they got quite a quote to fix the leak in here so this system has a refrigerant leak i did stop by quickly for about 15 minutes and i noticed back here you'll see when i take the cover off we have the capillary tube, which is our expansion valve in this type of system, is broken. Apparently, the last technician said that there is a leak in the heat exchanger. I'm assuming he's talking about either the condenser coil or the evaporator coil. Nobody really says those things. But my question is, how did he know that there's a leak in there when there's a huge break in the capillary tube as soon as i pressurize this with nitrogen it's just shooting out of the capillary tube do you really have time to see if there's a leak in your coil i have a feeling that's not true let's go ahead and start taking this off and see exactly what's going on as far as capillary tubes i have one in my truck so we have some screws along the side here and probably the other side as well so let's go ahead and start taking that off all right, so we got the screws off. We should be able to just take this right off. And now we can work in peace. We have quite the trail of rust here. But if we look closely, right here, this pipe is just hanging. This is a little capillary tube, and it goes down this hole right here. So we're gonna have to get access inside here or open up the inside and see where that goes and replace it. I looked at the model number of the compressor and it is a quarter horsepower motor. This is a Subco capillary tube, the BC1, which is good from one fifth to one quarter horsepower. So the capillary tube acts as an expansion valve for small systems. Here's our condenser, here's our condenser fan, and the coil is inside here. So I'm assuming this right here is our liquid line. So we follow the liquid line. Then it goes into our expansion valve and this goes down here. So from the liquid line, it goes into your expansion valve, which is our capillary tube, and then down into our evaporator, which is gonna be in here. So let's open that up and see exactly where that goes to. It's such a bad place. It's literally like cut right here. I don't even know how that broke like that. I really hope the last guy literally just didn't break it on purpose so yeah let's go ahead and make our way down and try to get some access in here personally i don't work on these kind of refrigerators but it's a favor so let's go ahead and see how we take this thing apart these shelves we kind of just hook into place so let's move along we do have little clips here all right, there's the screws. Got some quarter inch screws here. And then some, actually some star keys. Interesting, why would they put those? Hopefully I don't gotta take all that out, but I probably do. All right, got some wires here. This looks like our little duct where the air comes through. What I'm thinking is, what if there's access in the back? Honestly, I hope it's through here. So I don't gotta move this giant thing out. There's a little bit of space. This is actually a garage. This is a secondary refrigerator. I wonder if there's access in the back. Now that this cover is off, see this is silicone here. This is sealed. This is this is one piece. And what about all this stuff? There's no way that they made it this hard to get to the evaporator. I have a feeling. We actually have to make it to the back. All right, so I got behind here. I did open up the back panel and I see two pipes coming down here and going all the way down into there. 
But the thing is, that little expansion valve is a little bit more inside and then down. We need to get access to that. So those two pipes in the back go down all the way to the bottom and it goes into the drain pan. So that's gonna be the high side of the system. I don't know where this evaporator is and I can't see how to get to it. This is ridiculous. This is such a horrible design. They really don't, don't want you to work on these things. I just don't see it. I wonder if I could just like cut from the top, take like a pigtail and kind of crimp it and just try to get that together. But this is ridiculous. KitchenAid, you guys are terrible. And guys, never buy a KitchenAid refrigerator. And if, and if you do, if it breaks, just throw it out. A horrible location. I can see the little tip sticking out right here. I really wonder if I can maybe cut around here and just try to braise it right there. I mean, this is my only shot. If not, this whole entire thing got to come out. I mean, this is just a terrible design. This is unbelievable. I'm going to take this whole thing apart. I don't even see where the screws are. Man, what were these people thinking? I don't know. Let's open this up. Let's see what we can get out of it. looks a little crazy cut open took the foam out but this is the broken pipe right here we need to get this together there's no couplings for this I'm thinking maybe I could use part of this pigtail and this is the cap tube cutter put, this side needs to be cut a little bit need a little bit more access this is my last chance and, and hope with this one because this is just ridiculous as far as this side to brace it's definitely possible. This is actually pretty amazing. This almost fits right into it. I could definitely braise that. If I could get more access here and just cut the ends open so the capillary tube is open, I could braise it right here. And hopefully that's the only issue. I really hope that this last guy didn't just break this. Like, how does that happen? Anyways, I hope I get more access here. If I could just cut this somehow, I'll braise it just like that. I do see a little bit of oil down there though, which is not good. I want this thing to go into flames, but cut this up and use it as a coupling. Oh man, that would be amazing. No way. If this works, this would be amazing. <laughs> oh man, hopefully this thing doesn't go on fire. We got foam and I see a little bit of oil down there, man. Well, let's light this thing up. All right, so I got a fireproof mat around here. I don't know how well I really got it in there, but that's definitely going to help. I got the smallest tip for my torch and a 15% silver brazing rod. So <sighs> there goes nothing. Nothing's on fire. I actually got it. <laughs> oh man. Let's pressurize this. Check for leaks. Throw a tank. Let's open it up. Charge through the high side. Let's go ahead and get the leak check and check up top. All right. All right, <laughs> that is unbelievable. It's not leaking there. Hopefully that's the only leak here. And if so, we're good to go. So let's go ahead and dump the nitro. Let's throw this thing in a vacuum and see if the vacuum holds. They said there's a leak in the heat exchanger. How do they even get in here? They must, they, you have to take this whole thing apart in a hundred thousand pieces to even get to it. I don't believe that at the moment. I hope this is it. I want one of the Schrader valves real quick. I just want to clear the lines with nitro. So I'm pushing out through the low side and it's coming out through the high side. So it 
there's no actual restriction there we're actually moving through so we should be all right all right once that clears we're going to put the schrader valve back on and throw this thing in a vacuum all right this is all open ready to go got my micron gauge on here everything's connected up top let's go ahead and start this up all right give it some time all right so it's been a little while they're definitely in a vacuum got 848 47 microns from my experience if you have a large leak you wouldn't you wouldn't even reach below about 2500 or 2000 microns considering we're in this deep of a vacuum that might have been it all right pulled a good vacuum went close to 500 microns that's a good sign as far as right now, I'm just going to leave this just like that and leave this for an overnight vacuum. If I come back in the morning and that holds, that's the safest test we can run so we know there's no leaks. All right, everyone, we are back for a new day. It's the moment of truth and we are still in a vacuum. We're still reading Micron. That's a beautiful thing. That was the only leak, just as we suspected. There is no leaking heat exchanger. That was the only break. Got my tank of 134A. This is my field piece scale. All right. I already purged this hose. I looked at the model tag and it says we're using 5.75 ounces. This is a very critical charge. So we're gonna weigh this in and see what happens. Flip the switch and see what happens. And motor started. All right, things are things seem to be evening out. Got the thermometer right in the duct. Thirty-two degrees. All right, it's definitely cooling. Let's just leave this out here. Let's see what the box temperature is. I'm having a problem closing this thing, but it is working. Pressures are a bit strange, but that might be because our low side is attached to the processing tube but anyways it is working i'm gonna leave this video here i just need to make sure this satisfies my temperature but considering it's 32 degrees coming out of the grill we're definitely going to satisfy between at 40 degrees for this box if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe and i'll catch you all next time